And welcome back everybody. On this segment of AZ Wonders, I'm going to take you on a journey to the Mendeleev Caves in central Arizona, right along the Verde River that you see in the foreground here, even though it looks more brown than green at this, at this time. But to see the caves, you want to go to the center of the screen as I zoom in and take a look near the top of the rock face again in the center of the screen. That's where we're going to begin and then wrap around in behind there into a canyon and take a look at some of the other caves and learn more about the lifestyle of the people I'll that lived the here. Caves here, which I'll um, have to show a little bit wider, wider pan, but um, there are dwellings. So basically what I uh, learned from research is that a cave eight is a, uh, a man-made cave Dug, dug out of the rocks. So basically what happened was the, uh, the people that dwelled in this area some seven to 700 to 1,000 years ago, um, they, they discovered that the rock was soft enough that they could actually uh, dig it out. So they created these dwellings up here. And there's a um, series of tunnels that go between the different dwellings. So imagine for each one of these uh, dwellings here, there's a large room goes up, uh, yeah, that spot right there is about 8 feet, goes up to probably you know, 10 to 12 feet at the, uh, at the opening. But basically there's a series of uh, other rooms that are just offshoots from here. So it's almost as if the, you know, they have a family room here with a little uh, spot where they presumably either had fires or maybe cooked their meals, maybe worshipped, etc. And then um, little rooms off to the side, whether they be considered bedrooms or maybe storage, you know, for food. Uh, I'm not sure. But as you can see, these caves just kind of go back uh, farther and farther. Uh, and they go in many, many different directions. In fact, I'm going to walk around and show you here that I am actually, even in this little section here where there's a few, uh, there's like about five of these linked together. This is the smallest portion of the, um, of the whole community of caves up here. So I'm just going to kind of slowly pan around and let you see some of the uh, uh, features of the, of the rock here. So the guy I'm up here with, Tony, he, he kind of joked that this is where they put their keys and, and uh, cell phones. <laughs> Uh, looks like this one had been uh, inhabited for some period of time by a little mouse, given the mouse droppings in there. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly what these, um, you know, these little holes would have been used for. If you look at that one right there, it's directly across from one right there. So maybe they would run a log pole between the two and, and uh, use it to hang things or uh, create a screen, what have you. And I have seen some inscriptions in the rocks around here, and it's hard to... Uh, you know, determine what is um, of the ancient peoples and what is uh, of people that have come up here uh, since then. But nonetheless, I think this one is uh, is really cool here. It looks like it's more of a design of some sort. So I'd like to believe that that uh, goes back to the uh, ancient dwellers here. Some uh, what appear to be very deliberate holes in the in the uh, ground here. Was that you know maybe where they um, you know, uh, sw swizzled the stick to start start embers in a fire, for a fire, before moving it over into this pit here. Who knows? Okay, so now I'm moving into the next cave over. And uh, this one is about the same size. It has a lower ceiling, if we want to call it that. But it seems to have a little bit bigger uh, rooms off to the side here. And then what I did find is uh, as you go through each tunnel, they get a little bit bigger, at least for this immediate area. So I think I see a spot where we could go down here, and then there's like a little, uh, oh, okay. kind of like a little wash there, and then see how it goes up right yeah. over there. I think you get over that other side. Perfect. And those, uh, I don't know, they seem like they have had more, uh, almost like masonry buildup or something, you know, unless that's just rock that collapsed over there. Yeah, but I thought I saw a similar thing on one of these over here, where it almost looked like they mud stacked. Yeah. Build that addition on the house. Yeah. A little home remodel. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Me either. So let's. 
let's have a look. Uh, on this occasion, I can do too if I come around this way. Tony just spotted his first uh, rattler ever in Arizona, and I've not seen one ever either, so this will be a good, uh, good video moment. Where's he at? Oh, back in there. Okay. I think rattlers are like um, bears where they have their protective mama hanging around. Hope not. Yeah, we've heard about the guana at the Carlsbad Caverns, and I think uh, we've got the same situation right here. <laughs> Looks like the bats might come in here at night and hang and drop their uh, guana right down here. And supposedly, the bat guana is supposed to be some of the most uh, nutritional <laughs> fertilizer that you can get. But this, uh, this cave is one of the bigger ones over here on the other side. You can see it goes back in there quite a ways. So there is absolutely no way we could hit every single one of these caves uh, here at this side. Uh, we started over there, across this uh, this little valley here, made our way back around, went into probably you know, eight to ten different different caves. And the thing is, not all of them, but most of them are just kind of interconnect. So you see, there's some cave openings over there, and then uh, one of the last spots there was just videotaping. I came through. There. nicer than all the other ones, but the, definitely the lighting is just perfect to be able to see the uh, texture on the walls, uh, the little notches there, unfortunately somebody uh, had HP there, but uh, anyway, just, just look at this, again, just imagine this is probably uh, like a main family room. hallways to the family members. Here's what appears to be their little window by the fire pit, but it could even be a wash basin. Looks like a nice little bowl to uh, have water in. Looks like there's three, three bottles of it. And again, just take a look at this view. Uh, not a bad place to come and spend your mornings or evenings. Like Tony and I were talking about how the view here be incredible because right over those mountains in the background is where the sun would set. So imagine about the 30 minutes before the sun goes down, all these buff colored rocks here would turn uh, pink, almost to red. You'd have the uh, sunset illuminating back there. And just lighting up all these rocks. So as I was walking along, what I noticed are, you see one of them right here. are 
our pottery shards. We all know that uh, ancestral people made their pots and pans and so forth out of clay. So these are remnants of uh, pottery shards. site that is so far away from civilization it takes quite a bit of work to get over here and therefore um, not that many people come up here and what that many people means fewer people to uh, steal or vandalize from the site oh, here's another spot with some shards Notice ancient ruins, archaeological resources, fossils, and historic remnants in the vicinity of this notice are fragile and irreplaceable. The Antiquities Act of 1906 and Archaeological Resources Protection Act of 1979 protect them for the benefit of all Americans. Enjoy, but do not destroy your American heritage. Do not dig, remove, injure, or destroy any historic, pre pre historic object from ruins or sites. Violators are subject to arrest maximum fine of $20,000 for imprisonment. Those are going up the I love these uh, stones right here now. Um, I didn't see any at this particular site, but at some of the other um, Indian dwellings or ruins that I've been to, they use those um, stones as a kind of a grinding stone for um, flour, to make flour. And uh, what you'll see is over time, those get, get really ground down to the point where it's like a, like a Bowl almost. So, uh, just another sign here that I came across. Uh, it looks like there was a uh, sign on the at one point. So, and here's a, here's a, here's a ruby trail, but they apparently want to keep uh, cattle out of this area. So, uh, they were talking about protecting bats. Bats may be roosting. I uh, heard one, didn't quite see it, but uh, we definitely saw evidence of bats. Facing or destroying natural features. Walking, pushing, or climbing on the wind walls while the uh, walls is unlawful to do. So, uh, anyway, there's a few more caves, ruins over there. And looks like there's one up there that we didn't see. Okay, so I was just getting ready to walk back over and join up with Tony and uh, had a nice clearing. Notice how it's fairly lush over here. Uh, and that's because we've had a lot of rain recently. We're in what we call monsoon season here in Arizona. And uh, ordinarily this is just very barren and dry. Uh, but there's one spot here where it's not overgrown and you can just see um, the different shards right down in here. So it's almost as if um, they had been... Uh, I don't know, broken apart up above, or maybe over time when the when the ancient people um, when they were basic, you know, their their pots had uh, kind of run their useful life. Maybe they brought them down here to, uh, uh, to I, I guess just dispose of them. Maybe they had a spot over here where they'd break them up, and and uh, you know maybe that was one of the kids' jobs. But as I'm walking along here, I mean you can see. These, these little shards, um, you know, the discolored rock, that is definitely not part of the native uh, stone here in the soil. Those are pretty clearly pottery shards to me. Yeah, there's right there, right there. They're all over the place. A big chunk of one right there. Now, a lot of times at these ruined sites, what will happen is, uh, for one reason or another, a wildfire will come through and clean out a lot of the brush. And very often when that happens, then when uh, people go in afterwards to survey the damage, they find a lot more artifacts that have been covered up by the trees and shrubs. So I'm sure that would be the case if the fire ever uh, ran up through this spot. I imagine variety of uh, 
tools and weapons and things like that. 